Hi everyone, welcome to GX Core 1.0. My name is Nevin and I'm a Senior Developer Advocate at Great Expectations. I'm here today to introduce you to GX Core 1.0 and take you through just how easy it is to get started. So what is GX? GX Core is the most popular data quality framework in the world. It's open source and designed to empower data teams in managing their complete data quality lifecycle. That includes testing data you ingest from other teams and getting alerts on those tests, but also collaborating with all of the data stakeholders and documenting your collective knowledge about it. At its core, GX is all about, as you might have guessed, expectations. Expectations are declarative statements that make verifiable assertions about your data, essentially unit tests. You choose expectations that fit your data, validate those expectations and review the results. It's really as easy as that. Don't believe me? Let's jump right in and see how this all works. Naturally, GX runs on Python. So the first thing you'll need to do is install the great expectations package in your local environment or VM with a simple pip command. With that out of the way, the next thing you'll want to do is import GX and the expectations package. Let's create a data context. A data context is the primary entry point for a GX deployment. It manages your GX configuration and provides methods for interacting with GX components. A data context also allows you to configure top level components. And you can use different storage methodologies to back up your data context configuration. After you instantiate your data context and store its configurations, it always behaves the same way. In this example, we'll store our data context to a file using the file mode. Next, we'll connect to a data source. In this demo, we'll connect to a Postgres data source, but GX Core also has support for many others, including Pandas, Snowflake, and Databricks. We'll call the add Postgres method and provide a name and a connection string. We'll then create a data asset, which is what we will write our expectations about and how we will organize our results. Typically, this would be a table within your data source. In our example, we have a Postgres table that contains a sample of taxicab data from New York City. It's a great open source data set that contains information about taxi rides in New York City, like the fare amount, passenger count, pickup and drop off times, etc. The last thing we need to do before creating our expectations is to create a batch definition. A batch definition describes what data will be validated in each run. You could, for example, create a batch definition that is the whole table, or you could create a batch definition that's a subset of the table. In our example here, we'll create a definition for the whole table. Now that we've done everything needed to connect to our data, let's create an expectation. GX provides a comprehensive library of expectations you can choose from to make assertions about your data. I won't go through every single one here, but as you can see, there are many options that can help you address a variety of data quality issues. For now, let's create an expectation that checks the maximum value in our passenger count column is never more than four, since taxis in New York City can only hold up to four passengers. To do this, we'll use the expect column max to be between expectation, passing in the passenger count column and a max value of four. Now we get the batch from our batch definition. And finally, we can run a validation with our expectation and view the results. Well, we can see that the expectation we created actually resulted in a failure. While we asserted that the passenger count should never be greater than four, in reality, there are some rows in our table that have a value of six. I didn't realize that some taxis in New York City are minivans and can hold up to six passengers. Well, updating this is quite simple. Just set the max value on the expectation to six, rerun the validation, and we can now see that the result is passing. As you can see, with just a few lines of code, you're able to create a simple GX configuration, create an expectation, and validate it. 
This is just a taste of what's available in GX 1.0. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to check out our docs. And if you're already familiar with GX and want to take the next step, be sure to check out GX Cloud. We look forward to seeing how GX can help you improve your data quality.